Hey guys, welcome back to Roop Troop Adventures. If this is your very first time here with us, welcome. My name is Stacy, also known as the Roop Troop Mama. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts and personal review of Generations Homeschool Curriculum, specifically their history for middle school. And we are going to be reviewing Taking Europe for Jesus. Now, before I tell you my general feeling about it, I'm going to go through and show you how it is laid out, how they put it together for you to use it. Then I'm going to tell you how I use it. And finally, I'm going to let you know what I really think about it. So if that's something that interests you, let's get started. So before we get started, I probably should put a general disclaimer out there for a couple things. First of all, yes, I am an affiliate with Generations Homeschool Curriculum because I love what they stand for. I really appreciate their price point for homeschool families, and I truly enjoy their curriculum. Um, the second portion of my disclaimer that I want to tell you is that um, I am just a homeschool mom. I have six kids. I have homeschooled all of them the entire time. I don't have any, like, special degrees or certificates or anything that gives me some sort of um, credentials, I guess you should say. I'm just sharing with you my experience. I'm not a history buff. I'm just a person who wants to, you know, I'm just a mom who wants to teach her kids the best she can um, using good quality homeschool curriculum. So that is where I'm coming from. I'm so as I mentioned in a previous video where I did the unboxing of the middle school program, complete grade level through generations, um, we did receive these books for free to be able to use and let you know what we think. All right. So first, we are going to dive into the textbook of Taking Europe for Jesus. It is level six. So it is definitely written on the middle school reading level. Um, it is broken down into four units and then in individual chapters from there. History or geography, it's got the maps in there so you know what locations you're talking about. You're going to have um, artwork, that is works of art, I should say, that are captured in here from the time period that you are discussing. You will see that in this book you do have vocabulary words that are highlighted and then they are defined over here. Within all of the chapters, they do always have scripture tucked in where they're tying it back to God's word, as well as at the end of the chapter, they have prayer points, which is kind of a neat addition that I don't always see in other curriculums. Um, ways to pray for that specific area. This one happens to be France. Things to pray about for them and that region and their government system and their people. So that's a nice touch. So as part of the sixth grade core curriculum set, you also get the workbook that corresponds with the textbook. I believe you can order each of them independently. You could order just the textbook if you didn't want to have the workbook. Okay, so they first start with some background information for you as the mom. They're going to give you an overview. They're going to talk to you about what we're actually doing in this course, maybe some um, scheduling ideas, how to break down your units, and grading tips. They're going to give you a suggested daily schedule, and I hope you can see that all right. And it really breaks down all of the assignments that go along with your book. Um, and it is all very well laid out. Week one, week two, week three, week four. And it all kind of follows the same system. You're going to read the first half of the chapter. You're going to read the scriptures. You're going to do the vocabulary match on day one. Then on day two, you're going to read the second half of the chapter. You're going to read the scriptures out loud. You're going to match the second part of the vocabulary. On day three, you're going to do the chapter three content review, fill in the blank questions. On day four, you're going to do the multiple choice questions. And on day five, you get to pick from one of the projects. One of the things that is very different is on Friday, they really try to give you a chance to address your learner and allow them to show what they have learned through a style that most seats, suits them. So you have kinesthetic options, which are the more physical options. You've got the auditory options where you may be listening to uh, music from that time period and then sharing what you research and learn about it. Um, 
the first one that Benji chose to do, um, because he is now 12 and he is doing the sixth grade curriculum, is he chose to uh, do a map and a poster that showed all about Paul's journey of where he went on his missionary travels, and then he presented it to the family. I love that they give you so many different options because by the time you get to middle school, kids generally do understand, one, how they learn best, even if they can't necessarily put it into words. And they also know like what interests them and what they want to share with somebody. So this is a good way for them to be able to show what they've learned in a fun way. So my first thought about this curriculum is it is a great layout and an easy way for you to give that middle schooler their independence, hand them their assignments at the beginning of the week. They can go through and do it independently. You can check in with them on Friday. They can do their project, and it is a great independent learning system. We have generally used a Charlotte Mason style history and done it all together, and it is more of like a story-based history curriculum. I wanted to still keep everyone listening to history together. So I do not follow the schedule that is in the book. On Mondays, we do science and we do all the science, which I shared in my science review on Friday. <laughs> and so on Friday, we do the history and I read it out loud. They all listen and we read the whole thing at one time. Then I will give it to Benji and he will go and he will answer the vocabulary questions and the short answer questions. He does all the book work independently. Then over the weekend, he will work on the project, whichever one he chooses from their examples. And then he will present it either on Sunday evening or Monday, either one. So that's actually how we use it. I can totally see how it would fit the other way for other lifestyles. Just for us, that almost like loop schedule of Mondays is science and Fridays is history. And of course we do math and language like every single day. So that's how we actually use it. Now, my thoughts on the content. <sighs> history is a touchy subject for me because I heard somebody say one time, history is always told from the hero's point of view. So when I started looking at history curriculums to share with my kids, I was very sensitive to who was telling the story. If it, for instance, when you study a war, if all the information that you have before you is from the ones who won the war, that's going to be a whole different way of looking at things if you don't also include stories from those who lost the war. So, as a Christian and as a God-centered world view being super important to me with our curriculum, I did not want to fall into the trap of Christianized history. And I say that because specifically with history, it's very easy to paint a picture of this specific time being so blissful and, you know, it was this time of enlightenment and all these wonderful things that were happening for Jesus, <laughs> you know, or like the spread of Christianity had reached the ends of the earth and they're throwing in all these scripture verses. And I didn't really want Christianized history. You know, like when you read some of these books and it's like they are telling the story only from the Christian lens. And I say Christian lens, but it's kind of like the religious part of Christianity. Like they've just taken history and like sprinkled Christianity all over it. And I'm uncomfortable with that because what is most important to me is a God-centered world view. And so it all has to like start there and be built outward. That can be possible with history too. So what I love about a God-centered worldview history, number one, I didn't know that was actually a thing. I was just used to kind of Christianized history. But this curriculum does a great job of telling what those people were like at the time, what the rulers were like at the time, advancements that were being made. 
and a clear look at what culture and society was like. And that is critically important and something you can really start to dive into at that middle school level because that is how we teach our children what difference Jesus and his apostles made. Because if we just act like it was always easy or we only talk about the good things that uh, Christianity was doing in the world, we miss like the specialness. So I totally, totally, totally love that. This history is all told from the perspective of spreading Jesus throughout this part of the world. So I hope that this video has been helpful to you. If you have questions about generations, be sure to look in the description below. Click my link and it'll take you right over to see the history curriculum there at Generations. They do have sales from time to time. And that is always when I try to order because I love a good deal. If there is another subject that you are interested in there at Generations, comment below and let me know what else you would like to see a review of. See you real soon.